Hello, hello, Dylan Pines here with Musician on a Mission. And today we're going to be talking about one of the biggest industry secrets for getting pro level compression. We are going to be talking about gain automation. It's an amazing way to get a consistent compression tone across an entire song for all of your instruments. But before we get into it, I want to let you know we are giving away a free bonus for today's video. We're giving away our entire treasure trove of mixing cheat sheets. We've been designing these over the past few years and there is some fantastic info in here. Stuff on EQ and compression and reverb, delay, saturation, volume balancing, anything in between. We've probably got it in this pack and we're giving it away free. So if you'd like your own personal access, just click the link on screen or down in the description below and we'll make sure to get one sent straight to you. So with that said, let's dive straight in and talk about gain automation. So gain automation is basically where you automate the gain level of an audio file so that it averages around the same level throughout the song. Let me break that down into plain English. Now we're talking about the gain level. You know, that's the amplitude, the level, the loudness of our individual audio tracks or individual audio files or regions, not the level of our channels. That's our volume. Volume automation and gain automation are not the same thing. So if we're automating the gain level of our audio file, that means that we're going to be changing the audio file itself so that we have a more consistent performance across the entire song. The obvious question that comes up after this is why should I care? Well, this is a huge secret for getting pro level compression, especially for professional vocals, stuff that is really, really dynamic. Basically, if a track is really inconsistent and level, it's not going to be compressed the same way throughout the song. For example, let's look at this vocal. So you can see that in this part of the chorus, it's extremely loud. I'm going to actually solo it out so you can hear it. And when the song hits hard with the drums and guitars, the world explodes to the But then at a different part of the song, earlier on in the verse, it's much, much quieter. Time slows when you get close to the horizon. So if we were to put a compressor on this, where would we set our threshold? So let's look at what this looks like on a compressor. I've got a compressor here that I've got preset up and we're gonna see it's getting, you know, three or four dBs of gain reduction at the loud moments. Check this out. And when the song hits hard with the drums and guitars, the world explodes to the great divine. But if we take this to our quieter moment, we're not gonna get hardly anything. Time slows when you get close to the horizon. Compression is going to change the tone of the instrument. And if it's set up well, it's gonna change it for the better. But if you have an inconsistent performance where a certain part is very quiet and a certain part is very loud, then you're gonna have not only inconsistent dynamics, but also an inconsistent tone because your compressor is going to be working wildly differently depending on the part of the song that you're on. This happens not only in vocals, but also in just any dynamic instrument. So for example, let's look at this organ. So up here you can see that during the verse, it's a little bit quieter, but during the choruses, it gets quite a bit louder. So if I was wanting to compress this, I would really struggle because I would have to compress it so that it was getting the right amount of compression for the loud moments, but then I would get almost no compression for the quiet moments. So what can I do to fix this? Gain automation. I can automate the level of my gain so that I'm getting consistent compression throughout the song. Now, before I show you what this looks like, I do want to point out something. Gain automation is not the same thing as volume automation. Gain does not equal volume. They're two different words that describe the same thing, amplitude level, the loudness of a sound, but gain is the level at the beginning of a signal chain, and volume is the level at the end of that signal chain. So the loudness of our individual region, that's our gain, but the loudness of our channel, that's our volume. And since we're going to be affecting what our plugins here, we want to change our gain. Because if we change our volume, that's not going to change anything that is going into the plugins. That's just changing what is getting sent 
out of the channel. If you remember nothing else from this video, remember that gain equals input level and volume equals output level. So let's talk about how to actually do gain automation. Now we're actually gonna start off looking at our organ instead of at our vocals, just because it's a little bit more of a simpler example. And really quickly, I do want to point out, I'm gonna be doing this using Logic Pro and Logic Pro's way of affecting gain. Now every DAW has a different way of doing this. So I would do a little bit of uh, Google research on your own, just researching your DAW's name, gain automation, and you'll find how your DAW allows you to do this. But here's what I'm gonna do. I am going to look at my region and I'm gonna find the, the different sections that are obviously smaller than other sections. Like for example, this intro, this verse, going into this louder chorus. And I'm gonna hold down my command key. And you can see when I do that, this little plus pops up. Now, what this is, is basically my marquee tool is what that's known as. And it allows me to select different parts of a region or multiple regions. And whenever I click on this selection, it splits it into its own region. This is an extremely helpful tool for many, many different mixing techniques. But for this moment, it's great because it allows us to change the individual gain of just this individual spot. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go over to my region dropdown box, which is right here. And you can see there's a little function labeled gain. Now I want you to look at the waveform whenever I move gain up and down. So you can see as I increase the level of the gain, the waveform increases. And as I decrease the level of the gain, the waveform decreases. What's great about this system is that I can basically just use my eyes to do my gain automation. You know, this is a soft science. It's not a hard science. I'm not trying to get this exactly perfectly right. I'm just kind of trying to get everything in the same ballpark, you know, the same general loudness. And so I'm able to use my eyes and just say like, okay, cool. That's, that's probably pretty close. And then go in and solo it and listen and see if your eyes and your ears agree. So for me, that was actually just a little bit too loud. So I'm just gonna take it down by one dBs and call it a day. I would want to do this pretty much across the board on all of these individual sections. And it's important to say, whenever you're doing something so broad like this, you're wanting to pick sections not necessarily moments. So I would want to go in here, for example, and cut out this whole section and increase that rather than going in here, cutting out this moment and then cutting out this other moment separately. Because the more I subdivide it into just different parts of a performance, the more difficult it's going to be to keep it sounding natural. So let me really quickly go and actually do my gain automation for all of these sections. I'm not going to actively try too hard to get it right. Obviously you would want to go back and listen to it and make sure that it sounds correct. But I'm gonna say that that's pretty good. So I'm going to grab these four regions because I already got this first one. And I'm gonna turn the gain up a little bit so everything's kind of in the right area. We're gonna say that's good. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select all of my regions and I'm going to add some crossfades. So what crossfades are is they basically will automate the level of one region, you know, the region on the left, they'll automate it down while at the exact same time automating the level of the region on the right up. It basically keeps you from having any kind of weird speaker pops when one region cuts into another region. It's a really great way to have clean edits. So in order to do this, I'm gonna go to wherever I had messed with my gain. I'm gonna click down to more, and then I am going to go to fade out. I'm gonna change that from out to crossfade. And then I'm just gonna add in 10 milliseconds. It really doesn't need to be much at all. And I'm gonna listen. We're gonna make sure that that's sounding okay. You see how I could hardly hear that transition at all? 
That's what a good crossfade will do. So now that we've looked at this organ, let's take a look at these vocals. Now, most instruments, if you're wanting to do any gain automation on them, you know, you're really only gonna have to affect specific sections. You know, turn the verse up, turn the bridge down, something like that. With vocals, if you're okay with putting in a little extra work, they can sometimes really benefit from you looking at individual phrases. So making sure that each phrase is on average around the same loudness. And this is because the vocals are so heavily scrutinized in the mix and they need to stay so far forward. So having really good compression is an essential to getting a modern vocal sound. So how exactly would I go about doing this? Luckily, this is another thing where you can just use your eyes and then go back and double check with your ears. Now, this is a rare moment where I'm going to tell people to use their eyes actively. Usually I'm pretty big at saying, hey, use your ears, don't just trust your eyes. But splitting these individual phrases up and then increasing their level like so, so that they all kind of look like they're generally in the same area, and then later on going and listening and making sure that's true is a completely fine way of making this work. Now, you're probably going to be going back and changing up where the individual edits are because you might be cutting breaths in half and you definitely don't want to do that. You might be having some strange popping noises going on and you, or you might be cutting off an S or the end of a word. So, uh, again, you're definitely going to want to go and double check stuff. But for now, what I'm going to do, let's just focus on this. I'm going to grab this. I'm going to definitely want to turn this up a little bit. Grab this. Turn it up a little bit. Um, this maybe down just a hair. And yeah, on the whole, this is all looking quite a bit closer. Again, we're just trying to make it closer to being in the same spot, not necessarily exactly in the same spot. I might actually take this down a little bit. There we go. And so now I would just grab all of these and I would add a crossfade. So I'd go over here. I'd select crossfade and I'd add, you know, 10 milliseconds, totally fine. And then I would go and listen and I'd make sure that everything was still sounding pretty good. See if I missed anything or if I was maybe a little bit too aggressive. Thought we'd take a stroll around the block, but that wasn't fast enough. And you said, I can't get close to real emotion. So this is a great moment where I'm really glad I went and checked it. Because even though this looked like it was the same size, this is a much punchier vocal performance. And so the individual words in between sort of these words that the singer is like spitting out are actually a lot quieter. Whereas these words are a lot more consistent. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to take this down a little bit so it's not quite so aggressive. Honestly, a good rule of thumb, you're kind of wanting everything to have around the same average level. The peak level doesn't really matter. So basically, if you have a section like this one where you have occasional really loud peaks, you can kind of ignore those and look more for the rest of the sound. You know, where's the rest of the sound living? because a good compressor can handle those peaks. But if everything else is super quiet, well, that's not really gonna be very helpful to you. So my, I might wanna take this up quite a bit so that the average level is sitting where everything else is, even though these peaks are a little bit too dramatic. So now let's check this out. Around the block, but that wasn't fast enough. And you said, I can't get close to real emotion. And then at this point, I might just take it down a bit and say we're good and call it a day. This is supposed to be a pretty quick process. It's something that you should definitely do before you start mixing, but not necessarily something you need to spend hours doing. If you can just get it in generally the right area, you should be good to go. Now here's the big question that everyone asks me about gain automation. Won't this screw up my dynamics? And you know, it's true. You might want a particular instrument to be quiet in the verse, and loud in the chorus and gain automation gets rid of that. Kind of like our organ. The verses for the organ maybe sounded better before I did this gain automation and now they're too loud. But the great thing is 
That's what volume automation is for. Gain automation helps us to get a more consistent tone, but volume automation helps us to get more consistent dynamics. It helps our performance, our overall sound to be better. So if I maybe turned up my organ, let's say by two dBs, and now it's two dBs too loud in my verses, well, I can just open up my automation lanes and I could just grab this exact same area with my marquee tool and then turn it down by two dBs. And now it's right back where it was before, but with a much more consistent tone. So honestly, this is something that I will do on pretty much all of my mixes unless it's a mix where it's very stripped down and I'm wanting to keep it as close to the original performance as possible, this is definitely a great secret trick that's gonna help to get you much better sounding instruments. So with that said, that is how you do gain automation. Before you head out, don't forget we are giving away a huge free bonus on this video, our entire collection of designed mixing cheat sheets. Make sure to click the link on screen or down in the description to get your own free access. This is stuff that honestly, I will even use each time I mix. In fact, keep your eye out for the EQ balance chart, the thing that goes over the frequency spectrum. It is maybe my favorite thing that Musician on Mission has ever created. It's something that I use every single time I mix. Also, if you're new here, don't forget to like and subscribe. We make tutorials just like this one every single week on this channel, and we would honestly love to help you grow in any way we can. So that's going to about wrap it up for me. This has been Dylan Pines with Musician on a Mission, and remember, create regardless. Music